Hello, everyone, and welcome to Journey to Success Radio, a show featuring people and companies who are making a positive contribution to the world. This show will help you learn how to apply success principles in every area of your life so that you can make the most out of your skills and talents and accomplish more of your goals. To find out more about the show, please visit www.journeytosuccessradio.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Journey to Success Radio. Our purpose on Journey to Success Radio is to interview and promote morning, people who are uh, making a positive difference in this world. Good morning, Joe. My name is Tom Tutal Cunningham. I'm a Napoleon Hill Foundation certified instructor and speaker, helping people to live positively with and through the many challenges of life. I'm also Canada's most well-known Honda salesperson, working out of Oakville Honda, just outside of Toronto. You can find out more about me at my website. It's Tom, the number two, and tall, T-A-L-L dot com. I am excited today. My guest is Joe Girard. I saw Joe Girard speak in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada about 27 years ago, and I'll never forget it. Joe is in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's greatest retail salesman. He sold 13,001 cars at a Chevrolet dealership between 1963 and 1978. In 2001, he was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. He went on to become one of America's most sought-after speakers and the author of four phenomenal books on selling, all of which I have read. And uh, the records that he has set in the car industry are unbelievable, will likely never be beat. And as my new car manager was looking at the statistics last night, he was impressed and said that Joe sold more cars than this dealership sells together with 10 salespeople. Welcome to the show today. Thank you very much, and good morning to you. Um, Thank you, I, 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 uh I thought I was going to be interviewed by Tom, but I'm not, right? This yeah. is Tom Tutal Cunningham. Oh, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. Tom, my goal today is is to touch one person out there on what I have to say. Now, I want everybody to know that I, I, I grew up very, very poor. We had nothing. Mm-hmm. I had a father that uh, I don't know why he hated me. He used to beat me throw me out of the house for months at a time and keep telling me you're no good, you're a bum you're no good and beat me you're a bum but my beautiful mama who's in heaven used to say to me, Joey show show him so all my life I've I've been wanting to show him so you people out there listen to me because I'm not A-T-A-N-A All talk and no action. What I've done in the toughest business in the world, selling automobiles. So today, uh, Tom, if you want to ask me the first question, we'll we'll get on with the show. Thank you so much, Joe. And what I want to talk about, because so many people, when they see super successful people like you, assume that their whole life was successful. But let's speak to the people who really have not found their definite purpose in life. Maybe they're struggling with the challenges life throws at them. Not to lose hope. Uh, what was it? How did how did you turn your life around from mostly negative uh, circumstances, not going too far, and then all of a sudden uh, something switched? Was it your thoughts? Was it something you met? Someone you met, what was it that helped you change from the former Joe Girard to the Guinness Book of Records, Joe Girard? Well, like I said, it was it was my father constantly telling me with beatings and it was with his mouth that I was that I was nothing. And I tried and tried many, many things, but I I just couldn't find something that I I really loved. Now, I don't know if you people ever heard of Confucius. He said Find a job you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. I finally found this job after I lost uh, a $2 million building business because I wasn't focused in uh, 19, uh, at the end of 1962. So I, I, I went out and got a job uh, 
uh, I, actually, I beg for a job to sell automobiles so that I could bring home a bag of groceries because the bank had taken our house away, my car, my wife's car away, and I, 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 I couldn't believe it. And I'm thinking of the words my father said, you're no good, you're a bum. I said, maybe my dad is right. But I, I, I could hear the words of my mama, show them. So I went in and begged for a job. And I got a job selling cars with a belly full of fire. The first night, I sold my first car about 8.30 at night. We were supposed to close at 9. And uh, I I sold him this car. And after I sold him the car, you know what he said to me? He says, you know, Joe, Joe, I bought a lot of cars, insurance, and a lot of houses. But I've never seen anybody beg like you. Well, that's what I did for 15 years. I begged everybody with love, with sincerity. And there were times I'd, I'd get on my knees and say, please, please buy for me and help me and my family. And all the other salesmen used to laugh at me. Well, they're still working, but I'm traveling around the world to telling people, beg. Beg with sincerity. Don't look like a salesperson. Don't talk like one. Talk like, wow. talk like when you talk to your mother with, with love and sincerity because if you don't, people are going to say, well, I'll, I'll think about it and come back, and they'll join your Be Back Club. Well, there isn't a Be Back Club with Joe Girard because once I, I, I talk to you with a lot of love, I, and then I move in on you. And the first thing I do <laughs> when people come into my office, I... I I give them a, a little round pin It says, I like you. And I say, Tom, just for coming today, I want, I want you to have this pin. I like you. Even if you don't buy, Tom, I like you. But I know you'll buy. But this is what I did. I, I, I had a company send out 16,000 pieces of mail every month. And, and the card inside, on the face of it, it says, I like you. And inside, I, uh, every month I pick something to say, like New Year's Eve. There'd be a picture inside on the left side, there's something about New Year's Eve, and on the right, I would say, "I want to wish you a happy New Year." At the bottom, Joe Girard, I like you. No selling at all. Every month, something. In fact, today, I mean, for this month, it would be, uh, and I want to wish you. Um, a happy Valentine's Day on the right, Joe Girard. But I'm in your house every month, 16,000 pieces of mail. Yeah, but Joe Girard, you got all that money. Sure, you can do that. Now, wait a minute now. I started to do this when I had nothing. My wife and two kids, we used to put, uh, we used to send the mail out like this once a month. I don't know where it came into my head. I think it was from my, my, my pal. And my pal, his name is Jesus. He put this in my head. And every month we yeah. did it. And my business got bigger and bigger and bigger. Then I, hire, I hired a mailing firm. Now, one thing I can tell you people out there, use your money to further your, 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 your life and, your, and, your, and, and whatever you're doing. Don't give all your money to Uncle Sam because everything you spend for expenses, half of it, Uncle Sam will pay for. But these are the things you have to do constantly, market and promote yourself. Like when I send out my bills, my, my electric bill and, my, and, and uh, all the bills, phone bills, I don't just put a check in there. I put, uh, I put two business cards in there. No, the people that are opening wow. up this mail every month, they're, they're talking. Look, at every month we get a card from Joe Girard, Joe Girard, Joe <laughs> Girard. And I get them to, and, and finally I own the, the, that company that, that opened up my mail. And when I sell you a car, <laughs> at the end, after you give me a deposit and, 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 you, and you signed an order, I, I hire you. I say, Tom... I want you to have these cards. I give you 50 cards with a rubber band around it. Put your name on the back, Tom, 
anybody that comes in that buys a new car or truck, I'll give you fifty dollars. Well, Uncle Sam paid half. I only paid twenty five, but I got him up <laughs> telling his family, his friends, people at the church, look at look at Joe Girard, buy a car from buy and his name is in the back. Boy, you won't believe the action I had with the bird dog system. That's what they call it in the car business. Always promoting. Wow. Always promoting. And when I sell you a car, like I had two guys working for me after after many years. My business got so big, Uncle Sam paid half of that. Now after I <laughs> after I delivered you a car, three days later my right hand man would get on the phone and say, Mr. Gerard would like to talk to you and I'd say, Hi Tom, how's the car? Is it good? Remember what I told you? Mm-hmm. When I delivered the car to you, if you get a lemon, I'll turn it into a peach. Is the car good? Mm. Oh, great. Oh, great. Now, he's going to tell everybody, I bought a million things. Nobody ever calls me. Now, people are afraid to call because there might be a service problem. Well, well, with me, wait to hear what I did as far as service. Nobody's ever done it, but I did it. Every... Every third Wednesday of the month, I invited. I, ma- I made a nice deal with an Italian restaurant. And every third Wednesday of the month, I took the whole service department to have to have dinner with Joe Girard. Thirty-six people. And one thing I would tell them, you know, you know, one thing really kills me. If if somebody comes in for service and and then they come back, it wasn't done right. Man, don't do that. I mean, if there's anything you kind of don't understand, call Johnny or call Paul. And sometimes there'll be three people on a car. There would never be a car coming back. Because you know why? Because they loved me, and I loved them. <laughs> and each mechanic always had a stack of cards. After they worked on the car, they would give, they would give the customer a card with their name on it. Because they're going to get 50 bucks. Yes. And Christmas Eve, I gave everybody in the service department a nice bottle of wine. Can you just picture this at their dinner? You know you know who gave me this wine? Joe Girard did. Joe Girard. Talking, talking. I go to baseball games. I go there with 10,000 business cards. And I'm on the oh. upper deck right across the rail. And any time it ever happens big... Home run, I'm throwing cards all over the place. And, and, and the TV is watching me. Three million people are, 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 are watching. Joe Girard throw cards. The guy on, who's, who's on radio, he's, he's a million people there, and he's saying, there's Joe Girard throwing cards again. I'm throwing cards all over the place. Promote yourself. <laughs> the majority of business people, the majority of business people play dead. They never tell nobody what they're doing. Never. Now, I, I started something many years ago. If, if I shake hands with you, I'll give you a card right away. Now you have an option. You can either keep the card or you can throw it away. But at least I can walk away and say, he knows where I'm at. He knows what I'm selling. And who knows, he might buy. Or he heard of somebody that needs it. But if you... Don't give cards out. Don't promote yourself. As they say in Poland, you're dead ski. Done. But I'm always promoting Joe Girard because you know why? Because I like this guy. And this is what you've got to think of yourself. you got to say to yourself, I like you. And, and my motto is, if it's to be, it's up to me. Nobody will uh-huh. do nothing for you. When you lose your mother, you are alone in the world like I am. My mother is still watching over me. If it's Amen. To me, it's up to me. Yes. Amen. And maybe once a, once a week like I do, go to church and thank Jesus. Spend an hour in church. Now I might be talking to people, ah, hey, Joe Gerard goes to church. Well, some of you are going to be surprised down the line, but you got to have somebody that that you can talk to, whatever religion. I, you're I love it. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Tom, I'll let you say a few words. I just want to say one thing. <laughs> I just finished, and if you if you would give your address and everything uh, to my uh, to my secretary, I just finished um, uh, uh, two pages of of a talk that I'm, I'm going to give. And in this talk, if you do what I tell you to do, you will be a millionaire, guaranteed. And I'll, 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 I'll show you how to find business. And one thing I never did is watch the door. I'll show you where to find business that, that, that you won't believe. Buyers, I never thought of buying. I can show you things, how to overcome obstacles. I'll talk about the sins of salespeople, and they're loaded with them. And the sins are called the devil. The devil don't want to come near Joe Girard. Because any time he tries to get near me by saying, you know, if you say things yourself like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'll do yeah. around when I get around to it. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. That's the devil talking. Any time he talks, I don't give 100%. I give him 183% to stay away from my body. Because <laughs> when I get out of bed, I'll tell you the truth. I'm going to do good. Now, I'm going to tell you people, I don't tell many, I love to sleep. Oh, I can go to sleep anytime I want. Sometime I think I should have been born a bear. And when I get out of bed, <laughs> first thing I do is I look into the mirror and say that somebody is going to pay for getting Joe Girard out of bed. you got to have a reason to get out of bed. Do you have a reason? Well, here's what I do Amen. before I go to bed. I mark a Joe Girard in my head. Well, me before I go to sleep, I lay out what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I do everything. I don't care. I I I don't have the devil name and me called lazy. He don't dare come in my body. When I eat, I eat. I, yeah, go ahead, Tom. I Tom. love what you're saying there. Yep, I love what you're saying, Joe. Uh, all those things about not letting the devil get into your head and into your mouth. Like, don't say you're tired. You're, it's like you're commanding your body to be yeah. tired when you say you're tired. Yeah. And you so don't say those things. Yeah. Yeah. You are the captain of your ship. Yeah. But you got to yes. have a goal. You have to have a destination, like a captain. You think he starts yeah. the boat and takes off? Well, he'll go around <laughs> in circles. you got to know where you're going. And if you know where you're going, without the devil around your body, You'll get there 11 times out of 10. you got to have a goal. Before I go to sleep at night, I mark down what I'm going to do tomorrow. And Joe Girard, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Amen. Yeah. And, and when you don't I just saw, go to church. Pardon me? You don't just go to church. You said Jesus is your business partner. And when yeah. Jesus is your business partner, no negative thoughts can get in your head. No. no. He can get into my head. You know, you know. Every morning, Tom, I, uh, me and my wife, we um, exercise for 40 minutes. I mean, if you could see me, you wouldn't believe it. I'm 85 years old, but uh, honest to God, I, I look about 58. You know, I have a treadmill, a rowing machine, and a bike, and do, and we do yoga. And sometimes the devil, all the time, the devil will get into you. Oh, Joe, man, we're tired. We don't need to do that treadmill. I says, you know what? I think you're right. And I and then all of a sudden I'm getting on the treadmill. He said, Joe, what are you doing? You already told me you were tired and you weren't going to do it. I says, I'm not going to do it. And I start running. And I can hear him say, Joe, you're trying to drive me crazy. That's what I'm doing, you <laughs> no good rat. Killing yeah. all my friends out there with that word lazy, lazy, lazy. And then another thing. <laughs> Here's here's another thing I do that kill kill salesmen. I got one thing and so have you, and that's time. Time. Now when I come into the dealership every morning, I'll say good morning to you, everybody. But that's it. We will not talk. Don't you stop me. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear your problems. I, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't I don't belong to the dope ring around the coffee machine and the water machine. Don't stop me. And they knew that. And they hated me. They hated me for it. Well, I'll tell you something, folks. Once you have done big time, you're going to be hated. 
Like I was hated every year when they had this banquet, two, three thousand people honoring me. They used to boo me. They booed me every time. And after they quit booing me, I tell them, thank you. Would you do me a favor and boo me again? And all night long, me and my wife are dancing, and people will come up to me close. I didn't boo you, Joe. I didn't boo you. I didn't, tell you, I didn't boo you. And I'd laugh to my wife and say, did you boo me? And my wife would cry many times when I come off the stage, how they booed me. And I get on my knees at the at the table and say, honey, when they quit booing daddy, we're nothing. We're nothing. Yeah. For 12 straight years in a row, I let them boo me, and I loved it. Because I take a boo as a challenge. And you people, too. You have a problem, it's a challenge. A challenge to light your fire and hit the top. And show everybody. And that that yeah. rule was number one when I come in the showroom. Good morning, but don't talk to me the rest of the day. Rule number two <laughs> will kill you. You want to hear this one? Please. I never ate with anybody that I work with. I told them, I can't sell you nothing, and you can't sell me nothing. So I don't want to eat with you. I don't want you to come to my house. I don't want to go to your house. I don't want to talk to you. I'll tell you who I ate with. I don't eat with people. You should not eat with people that you work with or hang around with them. You know what? I tell all salespeople in all kinds of companies, the people that work where you work, they're your devils. They'll hold you back. Stay away from everybody. They can't do no good for you. They can't. Who do you eat with, Joe Girard? Well, first of all, I eat with the greatest three people in the world. My wife, my son, and my daughter. And you know who else I ate with? This is going to kill you. I ate with the guy at the bank and his wife and took him to fancy restaurants. The guy at the bank, I can put through a dead man with credit. (laughs) I used to sell 160, 170 cars a month, and they took every one of them. Because I gave them so much good business and I wined and dined them. I took out supervisors of big companies to me and my wife and their wife to fancy, fancy restaurants and wined and dined them and dined them where he's got maybe three, four, five hundred people under him. He's got a stack of my business cards. I got money. I got people coming in from all over. I ate with preachers of big churches and their wives. Fancy restaurants. Here's uh-huh. a stack more cards. Call me. Call me, and I'll, I'll say wow. a few words at your church, and they loved it. And I donated wow. to the church. But these are the things I did. I promoted Joe Girard. I mean, come on. Yes, I've yes. been on all shows. <laughs> I was on the Carson show. I've been on all the shows. I've been in Newsweek, Times, Fortune 500. And they all asked me the same question. Joe. How'd you sell so many automobiles? And my answer exactly. to them like was, I, I never, I never sold a car in my life. Well, the Guinness Book says you sold thirteen thousand and one in fifteen years. What'd you sell? I sold Joe Girard. People buy people, yeah. just like in marriage. You sell yourself, she buys you. She sells herself, you buy her, and you create the greatest advertising in the world to each other and to people. Service Mm -hmm. each other. This is what I did with all my service department. But you could see now, there was so many people coming in. The last 12 years I was selling, if you didn't have an appointment, you couldn't get into my office. And there were times you wait a week or 10 days. I averaged six or more every day. And before I got in the Guinness Book of Records, I think you should know this, because some people are out there saying, yeah, sure. After the Guinness people came from England to check me out, the top guy at the Guinness Book says, Joe, we, 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 we kind of like everything we see, because they were checking that there were fleet sales, uh, right. taxi cab companies. They had to be one at a time. And after after the Guinness checked me, they said, Joe, Joe, we want you to do one more thing. 
I says, like what? We want you to be audited by one of the biggest auditing companies in the world called Deloitte and Touche. And on my business card, I say, audit available on request. It's been checked, 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 checked. Now, the people that are always complaining, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. They're all, they're all losers look, looking for a reason why they're failing. Mm-hmm. Never think of nothing wrong or jealous of people because it does. Jealousy hurts you more than anything. Find something to do and clean your mind instead of worrying about what, what the, the Tom is doing or what Joe Girard is doing. If it's to be, yes. it's up to me. I if like I it. Sell, I if like I it. sell eight or nine cars today, I, I, I have to beat Joe Girard. The next morning, i got to sell more than eight or nine. And if I don't <laughs> like get him in bed, I'll trash him. i got to beat <laughs> Joe Girard. i got nobody to beat in this world but me. And I'm going to do yes. it. And every time I sell something, I look I, I, I look up to my mother in heaven, Ma, Ma, you're right. Ma, you're right. Ma, I, I am a bum, Ma. I am a bum, Ma. Hmm. You tell him I'm a bum, Ma. I'm a rich <laughs> bum, Ma. <laughs> That's what I am. These are the thoughts that must go through your head, because if you don't, you're going to be nothing, nothing. You got to turn your body on, put fire in your eyes and in your heart and belly, but don't let the customer see it. Sincerity. Mm. This is what I did, and when I delivered yes. a car, I always hugged everybody and kissed them on the cheek. Mm. I love you. Nice. I love you. If you need anything, you better call me. You now people are afraid of uh, service. They, they hate to tell people that. Because the majority of sales people go and hide. They hide from everybody. Well, Joe Girard doesn't hide. I'd rather service somebody than, than sell them. A bird in a hand is better than two in a bush. Service. Yes. Service. Service. You know how it's spelled? L O V E. Mm. I like you. <laughs> I love you. And hug everybody before they leave. And stand there until they. Pull away. No, just throw the keys. Oh, the car's at the side. Not me. I go out there with them. I sit in the car before I I deliver to them and say, you know, Tom, where you go, I'm going to go. And I got a stack of business cards, and and I'm putting the cards in the glove box. Wherever you go, I go. But, Joe, you already gave me a stack when I bought the car. Yeah, it could be in your (laughs) coat in the closet. Now I'm in the glove box, Tom. Where you go, I go. You know why, Tom? I like you. Why is that? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's, I love it so much. You know, and, and you know, Tom, and Joe, I had you, to, Go ahead. I was going to say, I remember from one of your books, when someone would come and you would be doing a presentation, you had so many things in your desk and your office that they would never, you used to have cigarettes of all the different brands. If yeah. there was kids, you used to have things for the kids. Balloons. So I had perfume here. for the wives. I, I had candy yes. bars again for the kids. And then I had a bar in my office that you couldn't see. I opened it up, and if a guy said, well, you know, Joe, I want to think it over. I'm going to go and have a drink. And I said, well, what do you drink, Tom? Well, I, I, I drink Canadian Club and Soda. I don't say nothing. I opened it up. Bang, 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 ice cubes. I got a little refrigerator in there, and I give him a mixed drink. I mix me a drink, too, with water, but he thinks it's gin. I said, let's drink to it. Let's drink to your car. You know you know what, Tom? Um, God, I like you so much. Gotcha. You ain't going to get away. I got everything in my office like you won't believe. But I got the yes. best thing in my office. A big apple that says, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't but you my used mail, to also have pins? Uh, pardon me? Didn't you used to also have attitude pins as well? Oh yeah, I had I Tom, I had more things in my office for different uh, uh for different things for different times. I had them all. Right. You you won't you you won't believe it. But the biggest thing I had 
is my mailing system. And yeah. don't think you're going to um, uh, uh, email somebody and thank them. You want to know something? If I owned a dealership, which I wouldn't want, <laughs> because I'm not a father of all them people. you got to be a father. Who who takes off for lunch for two hours? That's another thing. Mm-hmm. My wife would give me a brown bag, two sandwiches, and, and a cookie and a piece of fruit. I never left. You leave for two hours laughing and then come back. Not me. I ate right in my office. But mm. let's see, I was going to say something and then I, I lost the, what I was going to say. <laughs> Happens but, to me all but, the time. But, but that but, mailing system is. Oh, the I mailing agree. system is the best thing in the world. Forget them little them, them little things because I I don't have I have a a small uh, uh, what do they call them the iPads or whatever it, it it it's not an apple or a peach or all that don't come in the <laughs> showroom with those things you don't need ah. them things those things are ruining the world these computers and the Apple and the iPads people are uh, are losing the, the the way to communicate. You've got to get rid of that little devil. That's what it is. Put it on the floor yeah. right now, all you people, and step on it. Do it my way. <laughs> Don't send thank you cards or anything on the email. Send something they got in their hand. Just like when I hand you a card, I have an option. You can either keep it or throw it away. But in my mail it doesn't say anything about, about business or nothing. Here, Thanksgiving, you get one there. On the left side, nice picture about Thanksgiving. On the right, I want to wish you a Thanksgiving. For Christmas, is the same thing. On the face of the card, I like you. Every month, I'm in that house. Every month. And what do you say when you come home? Every day. Hi, honey. How are the kids? Any mail? Watch this. Can you hear 16,000 people to say every month, any mail? Yeah, Joe Gerard, Joe Gerard, Joe Gerard. <laughs> every month they're saying my name, and that mail keeps coming. Now, I, I don't know if I told you, I have a company that does it. Uncle Sam yeah. pays half. I pay a quarter, and where you work, they always pay the mail and the stamp. But I got an arrangement with the boss. The the, the the uh, government pays half, I pay a quarter of the half, and the owner pays the other quarter. And you can make the same deal. But yeah. every month I'm in your house. And here's another thing I do. I have a filing system that will blow your face away. It's immaculate. <laughs> How is it immaculate, Joe? I bet you all you people listening right now, a half of your mailing system is NG. What do you mean, Joe? Well, half the people are dead. They moved, da 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 da. But my, my but my mailing system, what it actually does, it uh, it, it cleans everything out. Every month, I might yes. get thirty five, forty envelopes out of sixteen thousand people died, people moved. No, as, yeah. as, as soon as I get that, my two guys go to the post office and find out where you moved or if you're <laughs> dead. And and and, and 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 we clean and we clean the mail I mean the file. We purify it every month. Yes. And I've had people say to me, Joe, Joe, I moved three times. And boy you 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 always find me, Joe. You know, you get the mail you always find me, Joe. I say, You know why, Tom? Because I like you. You hear the voice <laughs> when I'm talking? Yeah. Because Hesitation, because I like you, Tom. You'll mm-hmm. never, you'll never get away from me because I like you so much. Say hi wow. to the family, Tom. And I, I <laughs> and, and then, and then before you come in my office, one of my two guys qualify you. I got a sheet on you, just like when you go into the doctor's office. You, you, you see a, a nurse. Well, he finds out what you want, what you like, what you don't like, uh, how many kids you got. And then when I talk to people after they buy the second car, I pull out the file. And I remember he told me about his son playing baseball, son Jimmy, or something. And I say, 
Hey, Tom. Mm-hmm. Tom, Tom, how, how's Jimmy doing? I mean, the last time I talked to you, man, you telling me he was playing baseball. Or or, or your little girl, she's uh, she, she's taking dancing lessons, and his jaw drops. Man, you remember it? I, it was like <laughs> yesterday, Tom. And it was maybe three years ago. <laughs> Bringing up family and telling them, how, yes. how's the family? You hear the hesitation? How, Tom, yeah. how's the family? Oh, great, yeah. great. Tell them I like them. But wow. the mailing system, man, it just keeps Joe Girard alive like you won't believe. And then, of course, all the, all the people, the, like the banks and the supervisors and the preachers. And I'll tell you one other thing. I owned a great bird dog system. Are you ready? Yes. I owned every driving school in as they would say in Germany, in die Welt. I made deals <laughs> with every one of them, all through Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Well, they they take five or six people for driving lessons, and they're talking to them. Well, uh, yeah, and Tom, well, after you're through with your driving lessons, are you, are you, no, no he's qualifying for that 50 bucks. Yes. Yeah, you you uh, you're probably gonna buy. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna be looking around. There's a guy that's fantastic. Here's a guy. This teacher <laughs> talking to him. He is fantastic. Here, take this card. Joe Girard. Nice. Tell him that that uh, Tom Cunningham. It's right on the card. Tom Cunningham. I got every driving yeah. school too. Teachers, high schools. I got yeah. driving yeah. schools. I got them all. And you know how I wow. got them? At the beginning. I go to a driving school, and I find out who the owner is, and I sit down with them. I tell them who I am. I tell them, Tom, let's say the guy's name, Tom, my name is Joe yeah. Girard. I sell Chevrolets at, uh, here's a card here. Everybody you send me with these cards, I give them a stack of cards, I'll give you 50 bucks. Now, what I'd like to do today, I hand you a check. Already, here's fifty bucks, Tom. I gave you fifty bucks and you didn't give me nothing yet. You know what I call that? Yeah. I bought them. I bought them. <laughs> I own them. <laughs> yeah. And I go to other yeah. driving schools and say, "Hey, Freddie, I'll give you fifty bucks, and you should see the action I got from driving school." The guy might have five teachers that are showing people how to drive, and he might he might drive, drive with six people. They all got my card. Mm. You won't believe wow. that bird dog, the bird dog system. I paid half, and the government paid half. He ain't going to take my money, and he shouldn't take your money, too. Use your money to make money. Exactly. The name of the game is money. Use it. Yeah. If you, don't, if you don't use it, you lose it. You've got to <laughs> keep hitting out there. Driving school. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mechanics. Little mechanic shops, I got them all bird dogs, too. And I can go on and on with other bird dogs I have. Wow. I've got so many bird dogs, they're always barking. <laughs> <laughs> now, but Joe, I'll tell you, Joe. I had so much fun. And you know what? Yes. The best thing, the best thing, when I turned, I, I don't think it's in the books. When I turned, in my office, I had a sign. It said 49. I never had that in the book. And people would come in, and reporters, when they would interview me, they'd say, what? what's that 49 mean, Joe? Uh, just a couple of numbers that get me excited. Oh, oh, okay. When I turned 49, two months before, be, uh, before I was going to quit, I walked into the boss's office, and I says, Christmas Eve, I'm giving Joe Girard a gift. He says, oh, what? Joe Girard, I'm quitting. He turned white. He says, you'll never quit making this kind of money. I says, you'll not see me back anymore. Well, why at 49, Joe? Everybody had asked me. Because my father said to me, you're a bum. You're nothing but a bum, bum. Well, I had to listen to my father. Because now I bum all over the world telling people <laughs> how to bum. 
but you better do good to be a good bum. I mm. bummed and bummed. Yeah. I have a 40-foot <laughs> motor home, and we traveled to the backwoods and watched the birds and the bees, and we have lounge chairs. We sit outside, me and my beautiful wife, and I look up to heaven, and I tell my mother, Ma, look, I'm bumming. Tell him I'm bumming. <laughs> I know he ain't up there the way he treated everybody. You know, yes. I, I can see her yelling down the hell. Our Joey's not a bum. Oh, he told me he's mm. a rich bum. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me I'm a bum. <laughs> Joe, so, I remember. I re- Pardon me? Joe, I remember when I went, when I went to what, your seminar in Ottawa, up in Canada, you had a great affirmation. Was it, I feel happy, I feel healthy, I feel terrific? Was yes. that it? Yes. Here's, here's what you had to do when people, here's what everybody says to you when they first see you. They say, hi, Joe, how you doing? Well, when people ask me that, you know how I answer them? If I felt any better, I couldn't stand it. And if I didn't, <laughs> I'd keep my mouth shut. If you got problems, keep your mouth shut. Who the hell wants Amen. to hear your BS? Shut your yeah. mouth. A mouth is only good for one thing. That's to eat. Just keep <laughs> your mouth shut. I never tell yeah. nobody my problems. They don't want to hear them anyway, and I ain't going to tell you. How you doing today, Joe? I'm doing great. If I felt any better, I couldn't stand it. I love oh, it. Look at me. I, I always say that. Don't say, well, okay, I feel, well, all right. Well, let me tell you what happened to me. Man, get away from me. These people <laughs> are like garbage cans. They stink. Who the hell wants yes. to hear your problems? I had enough problems yeah, exactly. when I was a kid with that devil who... Yes. Who was my father? He was my exactly. devil, but he was. I can't say hmm. something good. Shut your big mouth. And exactly. there's another thing. When the customer is exactly. in your office, when the customer is in your office, I tell salespeople, open them up, get them to say something, and keep quiet. Don't interrupt anybody. Like I've seen people say, yeah, yeah, I see fishing equipment in the car. You you go fishing? Yeah, this guy says. Yeah, I go fishing. I man, I caught a big uh, a big fish the other day. And Big Mouth says, "Oh, that isn't nothing. I caught one twice as big." Now, how are you gonna mm-hmm. sell a guy a car? He's the fish you want to catch, but you but you yeah. embarrassed him, and he joins your be back club. Well, okay, Joe. I'll think about it, and I'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back to some other dealer who keeps his big mouth shut. Now, the way I'm talking right now, I don't talk like that in front of customers. Listen, God gives you two ears and one mouth. He's trying to tell you something. Listen, the more you listen, the more obligated the customer will be to you. You can make a lot of money with your two ears. Silence is golden. Yes. Right, Tom? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Talk <laughs> about the other, let the other person talk. Joe, what about, uh, can you tell me about uh, one of your favorite books, other than your own books, which are amazing? You know what? I have five books. I just, I just came out with the book that took me three years to write. It's called... Joe Girard's 13 Essential Rules of Selling and How to Be Tops, what you're doing, Mm. and Lead a Great Life. It took me three years to write it with two writers. I have five books, but the main book you better read before you read the other four. It's been in the bookstore 36 years. It's in 41 languages. If you don't understand English, buy it in Jewish, <laughs> buy it in French, buy it in Italian, buy it in Spanish. But buy the book. It's what called is it How called? To, it's called How to Sell Yourself. How to Sell yes. Yourself. I interviewed 16 men and women who made a lot of money. And they share with me. Now, if you're honest and you get the book, you... You should say this. 
they talk about things that you say or do that turn people off. Now, if you're honest, you'll say, geez, I'm going to stop doing that. Now, these people aren't A-T-A-N-A, all talk and no action. These people I picked out are all top, top people. A couple of billionaires are in there. And then they talk about things that you should do that you don't do, but you read it and say, boy, that's pretty nice. I think I'll do that. Wow. I'll stop doing these <laughs> other things. And you want to know something? I bet you never heard this before. You buy that What's book. That? You buy How to Sell Yourself. Now, listen to me good, folks. No one has ever done this. I'm going to give you www.joegerard.com. You buy anything from my office, and the first thing I do is I send you the sheet from the Guinness Book of World Records, autographed with your name on the Guinness sheet for a gift. You buy my book, How to Sell Yourself, and you don't like it. Are you ready? Send it back to me, and I'll double your money. Try that for size. I'll double your money. Wow. If this book doesn't show you how to play this game, and you know the name of the game, it's called Life. I don't care what you're selling, baby. You better sell yourself first or... They're not going to buy your life insurance or your house that you sell or ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. you got to sell yourself mm-hmm. like marriage. you got to sell. Yes. And let me tell you what you do with Joe Girard's books. You might not like it. Well, that's your problem. Joe Girard <laughs> says when you read his book, you read yeah. one chapter at a time, like eating. You digest it. If you read two chapters in a row, you're a loser. One chapter at a time. How many times have you went to a buffet and you ate and you ate and you ate? You didn't even know what the hell you ate. You read one <laughs> chapter. Read it, digest it, think about it, and highlight it. Remember what I said? You peek at that second chapter, you're a loser. Any of my books, I'll double your money. I challenge every one of you listening right now. Do you want to become better? Then do it my way. You know why? Because it works. It works. It works. I did it. 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 And you know what? You can do it. You can do it. If this kid from the ghettos of Detroit with an animal father can do it, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Do it. I want you to do it. And then I want you to email me or write me and tell me that I touched you. This is my goal today. Touch you. I want you to do good, every one of you. Do good. Do good. But take the devil out of your body. That devil. That filthy, rotten devil. Anytime Anytime you say to yourself, I'm tired, that's the devil talking. I'll oh, do it tomorrow. Yes. I devil talking. Yeah. Yes. I'll do it next week. I'm devil talking to you. Get him out of your life if you want to do anything. If it's Amen. to be, it's up to me. Say that to yourself over and over and over. Get how to sell yourself. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for your time today, Joe. This has been so, so exciting. I clearly remember what seeing you speak 27 years ago, and it's been a real honor to speak with you. You've really touched my life. I've already read all four of your books. I guess i got to get the fifth one now, and oh, I tell so many people about you. You've got to get that last one. because that last I will. One, it, you won't believe it. Three years of the things that I work and work, what people should do. But the first chapter... If you don't abide by the first chapter, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, yeah, the other 12 chapters, you can throw them away. The first chapter, you better abide by that one. Or, as they say again in Poland, you're dead ski. So I want to thank each and every one of you in closing. 
go on my my web, joegerard.com, and in closing, I want to say to all of you, I like you. Bye, Tom. Thanks so much, Joe. I like you, love you, and have an amazing day. Keep up the good work. Take Tom. care. We help you a lot too of as well, today. Too. Okay, I we like did. you. Bye, Tom. Bye. Bye. God bless. Okay. okay, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Journey to Success Radio. If you or anyone you know would like to be interviewed for the show, email Tom at tom for details.